welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus, 40 chapters all told, and today we're in chapter 39. And just sort of, I've blobbed together here verses 1 to 32, a good theological word there, blob. Uh, but here we have the first 32 verses. Moreover, from the blue and the purple and scarlet material, they made finely woven garments for ministering in the holy places, as well as the holy garments which were for Aaron, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the ephod of gold and blue and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. Then they hammered out gold sheets, cut them into threads to be woven in with the blue and the purple and the scarlet material and the fine linen, the work of a skillful workman. And on it goes and so on. As the Lord commanded Moses, he bit this was built. As he commanded Moses, this was built. Da da da, all the way uh, along the way through here. Two points come to mind here. What's interesting, too, is that in this uh, section, in this chapter, as all this is being laid out, guess what? The Urim and Thummim are not even mentioned again. That's kind of interesting. They're simply not mentioned. We've already talked about those previously, and wherever we hit them in the book. Uh, but just kind of a curious piece that they're not mentioned here. Uh, I wonder why that is. Is it, uh, is it just an omission? Or is it that God doesn't want to put too much emphasis on this uh, rather unusual? We remember you will, you will remember. There's a lot about the Urim and Thummim that we do not know. There's a lot of mystery there to us in terms of everything that. And it seems to have been kind of a almost a, would seem to us to be like a magical uh, device or something. Of course, it's not magic. It's just, but it's an instrument that God used. Uh, a means that he used to communicate with people, and we're not quite sure how that works. So we talked about why we're not quite sure and what it might be, and so on. We talked about that before. Just a curious piece that it's not listed here. Maybe God doesn't want to put too much emphasis on the Urim and Thummim. Uh, maybe he wants more emphasis on other things that he's actually mentioned. The other thing that's interesting here is what a massive project this was. You know, and you, they couldn't go down to Lowe's or Home Depot or something and get the power tools for it. They're doing this out in the desert, and they accomplish it. They finish it. It's a massive undertaking to create this whole worship system, structures, and all the pieces needed out of all different kinds of substances, and they complete it. And here we have in chapter 39 the completion of this just extraordinary massive project undertaken by all these people. And it's the, they're not in downtown, you know, downtown Egypt somewhere. They're out in the middle of the desert. So God can get things done when his people are willing to get them done. But there are large projects sometimes to engage in. Uh, in, in my own little tiny way, I feel like this uh, undertaking, taking the book, book of Exodus, and we've taken uh, substantially more than a half of a year uh, to work our way through the book of Exodus Kind of a big project, you know, all these videos, at least to me, and just creeping it into the edges of my time. But uh, but it's been so helpful to me to learn more and go in a little bit deeper. I hope it's been that way for you also. There's a place in our spiritual walk for a lot of shorter projects, smaller projects, and there should be a place for some of these larger projects because God works in many different ways, and he will often want us to go in more deeply get a better understanding of something. I hope your understanding of Exodus has improved at least somewhat uh, if, you've one, if you're one of the very few people who have gone all the way through this series with us here. All right, we'll carry on tomorrow morning with some more as we're getting near the end of the book of Exodus. Thank you for joining me.